Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a funny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So, if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll do it for you. Check out our second YouTube channel called Fanny and Jesse 2.0. Head there, subscribe, and enjoy our weekly content. We've got a podcast called Diving In with Fanny and Jesse, and we have some amazing conversations which you guys do not want to miss. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, this channel, or our second YouTube channel for the visual. And we have a Patreon, you guys can feel free to become members and we'll appreciate. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, everything that you guys do. We're very grateful. So thank you. I hope you guys are doing alright and may you stay blessed. So today we're going to be reacting to Does Islam Encourage War? So without wasting time, let's get into the video. You're watching Let the Quran Speak. Does Islam encourage its followers to wage war against unbelievers? We'll be looking at that now. Uh, some critics of Islam think that's so, and uh, you know they're not helped by Muslim extremists who wage war against non-believers and um, follow through with those misconceptions. So, Brother Shabir, um, what are your thoughts? What does Islam say about war and about our relationship to non-believers? Well, the, the Quran, to begin with, treats a war as a necessary evil, okay. if and when it is... Uh, it, one cannot have a better solution to, to one's problems. But in everything, the Quran encourages diplomacy, encourages conversation, dialogue, uh, settling things and, and making peace. So, so peace, is war seen as a last resort? Then? As a last resort. Okay. Uh, the, in fact, the Quran talks about peace all of the time. The name Islam itself is related to, the, to the, a, a root word which, from which we also derive the word for peace. Salam in Arabic, Salam Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, and the word of greeting that we utter to each other is assalamu alaikum, which means peace be upon you. Uh, so this this is the default situation. The Quran says asul uh, khair, reaching a, agreements and settlement. This is the best thing. Uh, but what is to be done if, in fact, uh, there is some enemy bent on killing you and there's no way you, you can make amends with them or bring them to the dialogue table? Now, the only way you can defend yourself is in the battle. Mm -hmm. Well, then, in that case, you're allowed. But then there are conditions uh, and, and uh, prescriptions on how you go about war. So what are the conditions? You, 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 you're not allowed to attack non-combatants. And uh, if the army, if, if the sol enemy soldier is down, you don't decapitate him or, or finish him off. You know, you have an injured soldier who is now uh, harmless to you, you don't harm him further because uh, the, you're allowed to, to inflict harm on him in the heat of battle to defend yourself, but now that there's no need for defense. Uh, the, the Quran in Surah 47, for example, says that when you are in the midst of the war, then at that time there is the striking of necks. But then, when the enemy is subdued, then you, 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 you bind them mm -hmm. uh, and you hold them as prisoners or release them for a, a ransom or release them freely uh, until the war lays down its burdens. Mm -hmm. that, that means that so long as the, there is, if there's no war, then none of this really is, is uh, going to matter anymore. Mm -hmm. And peace returns, that is the basic situation. Mm -hmm. So there's this verse that's often cited, it's, it's uh, you know, people say, kill them where you find them. There's this verse that's often cited um, to, to support the claim that uh, the Quran condones t um, war. So what would you, how would you respond to that verse? You're referring to Surah 9, verse number 5. Uh, that verse has to be read in its context, mm -hmm. on the same page in which it is written and within the whole Quran itself. Uh, we don't have time for all of that, but let's say within the page in which it is, it is mm -hmm. written. Uh, look at the verse that comes right after it, Surah 9, verse number 6. It says that if one of the uh, enemy were to come to you seeking refuge, Refuge, then you are to grant him refuge so that he can hear the words of God. And then you are to transport him to a place where he will be safe. Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, it, it, his place of safety, it says literally, which means he has the choice. Take me, that's where I want to go, and I'll be safe there. That means you, you have one of the enemies 
who, who come to you and says, I'm, I'm going to seek refuge with you, protect me. You give him protection. You're, you're instructed by God to do this. Give him protection so that he can hear the word of God. And then when he is ready, you have to transport him back to his place of safety. Hmm. Uh, that If you were to understand the verse previous to this, to say you're to kill all of the non-Muslims in, in, in a wanton way, then what about this person who came to you seeking safety? Mm -hmm. It means you should kill him too. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that you cannot kill him. You have to give him protection. That means you're, you're required to give this protection to one of the enemy who has come seeking protection from you. So going back to the verse that you asked about, Surah 9, verse number 5, how mm -hmm. is that to be understood? If we look at the verses which come before it, the first four verses in that chapter, you will see that there is also a prescription just before this one that says that uh, if the enemy uh, desists from their hostilities, then you should also desist from any engagement in war. Mm -hmm. So the other verses show that what was happening at the time was that there was an open declaration of war against Muslims, and Muslims had to now defend themselves in, 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 by going out full force against the enemy as well. And since the enemy was out to kill Muslims in any way possible by any amb Bush or any sort of uh, stratagem, the, the Muslims to have an equal hand in the battle in, in defending themselves were given this right as well. So mm -hmm. an open announcement was made to the enemy and they're being told, look, you have four months, which are the sacred months. In those sacred months, let's, let's no, nobody go to war. But outside of the sacred months, uh, you, as much as you're at war with the Muslims, be aware that the Muslims can play that game too. And they can defend themselves and by even taking the offensive. And, and as much as you're killing Muslims wherever you find them, Muslims would have the same right to retaliate in this way as well. Mm -hmm. But if you can desist, then it will all be even, Stephen. We will lay down our arms as well. We'll come to terms. But in the meantime, if any one of you uh, change your mind or you just want to check out what we are about, you want to come to us, we'll grant you safety. And when you're ready, we'll transport you back to your place of safety. Mm -hmm. Okay, very quickly, some people say that uh, Muslims only want to live in peace with, with non-Muslims when they have the upper hand. And uh, how would you respond to that? That may have been a way in which some Muslims conceived of their religion uh, during the Middle Ages and so on. I think uh, nowadays uh, very few Muslims would have that view. And in any case, it is not a view that is supported by the Quran at all. Okay. Uh, the Quran actually tells us to live in peace with other people and that this is the default situation. Uh, that uh, we should seek peace and uh, the, uh, what, what breaks the peace is when somebody attacks us and then we have to go in, in self-defense. So the Quran in Surah 2 verse 190, for example, says this, only fight against those who are fighting against you. All right, we'll have to leave it at that. We have lots more, it seems, to talk about. Thank you, Brother Shiver. You're welcome. We'll take a break. When we return, we answer questions we've received from you, our viewers. Very interesting video. I'm sure to summarize all these. They're saying, no, Islam doesn't condone war, but if the people attack, they are bound to protect themselves and attack back. But which... Now it made me think, because someone once mentioned um, Muslims once conquered Africa, some, not, not the entire Africa, but just parts of it. Why did they do that? Was it because they were being conquered in their own homes that now they had to come to Africa and conquer the Africans during that trade, um, the slave trade thing that was going on, or just now for someone to clarify? Otherwise, I don't think any religion encourages war it doesn't make sense we're supposed to be living in peace why can't we be so um diplomatic in a way that instead of fighting each other and killing people losing lives why not talk it out why not um just have um why not just have a more better way to communicate what we want instead of always waging war on the other person that waging war back as well <coughs> doesn't really make sense we should be our brother's keepers let's keep each other safe it doesn't matter what label you are what label the other person is how they think just because they disagree with you doesn't mean they're wrong and you should fight them no it doesn't mean that otherwise this was very very interesting really enjoyed this and if there's other videos concerning this that you want me to react to, let me know and I'll do it for you. Or the continuation of this video, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe.